Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. It's our food unit today. In our all English lecture, we're going to be talking about food in today's lesson. Well. Not exactly. We're going to be talking about drink.、Actually. We're going to be talking about a type of beverage. Exactly.、Yes. But of course, oftentimes when we eat food, we have something to drink、mm-hmm. alongside it. Although in this case, usually tea、uh, is drunk by itself, or you might have some snacks or something with it. Of course, when you drink tea here in Taiwan, at least in my experience, is you often have it with sunflower seeds or other kinds of snacks along with your oolong tea. But today、ah. we're talking about matcha, the art of Japanese green tea. Cool. It's a flavor you see being used in things like ice cream and cupcakes. I've seen both of those things with this particular flavor of green tea. We're going to find out more about this tea, but first, guys, as we always do, we're going to read through our lesson. A handmade bowl rests in front of you. The dark green liquid inside it is covered in a layer of foam. You pick up the bowl with both hands and taste the drink, a bittersweet green tea. This is matcha or powdered green tea. During the Song Dynasty, powdered tea was fashionable in China. In 1191, Isai, a Japanese Buddhist monk, introduced the preparation methods for powdered tea to Japan. And made it popular there. People there called this tea matcha. In time, it was discovered that growing tea bushes in partial shade gave matcha its unique flavor. Nowadays, at the start of the harvest season, farmers cover their tea plantations with black sheets so the tea leaves are not exposed to the sun. This shading process helps improve both the taste and aroma of the tea. The practice is done in April. And tea leaves are then picked in early May. Leaves are steamed and then blow dried. Finally, the leaves are ground into matcha powder. In the 1500s, the modern matcha tea ceremony appeared. Its goal being to promote relaxation and communication between hosts and guests. There are two types of matcha served in the ceremony: usucha and koicha. Usucha is thinner. And made from the leaves of bushes that are less than 30 years old. Koicha is thicker and made from bushes that are a minimum of 30 years old. In addition to the ceremonial side of matcha, the drink also has many health benefits. Matcha is loaded with antioxidants, which help prevent cancer-causing free radicals from harming our cells. It's also nearly calorie-free, boosts one's metabolism. And burns fat. Moreover, it helps people relax as it is rich in L-theanine. If you're ever in Japan and want to experience another side of the local culture, it's worth having some matcha in a meditative, traditional tea ceremony. Okay, guys, we're going to get started with matcha, the art of Japanese green tea.、Uh, I think it's probably a pretty、uh, popular flavor that we're going to be talking about.、Uh, let's start by describing the scene here. You've got a handmade bowl, and it rests in front of you.、Uh, if it's handmade, someone actually made it with their hands and didn't use a lot of machines. So it's a handmade bowl, and it rests or sits in front of you. It's got a dark green liquid inside, and that liquid is covered in a layer of foam. When you have a layer of something, it just means you have、uh, something like a material or a substance that covers a surface, or that is between two other things.、Uh, if you cook a lot, or if you've ever made a cake, you might have different layers. On your cake, maybe the first layer is a strawberry cake, and the second layer is chocolate.、Uh, you could do that. But here we've got this green liquid, and it's covered in a layer of foam. So on top of the matcha tea, there's something called foam, which is oh, it just looks like a lot of bubbles that usually、uh, can be produced by stirring really fast. Bubbles. That's the foam. 
Uh, exactly, and also there's some kind of packing material you might sometimes run across、uh, polystyrene foam or styrofoam,、mm. which、uh, I guess has small little bubbles. I think of foam when I think of、uh, an espresso, for example, a latte, for example, or a cappuccino. They're going to have this、uh, light milk foam on top of the coffee. Or if you go to the ocean and the waves are coming in, Tom. Yeah. There's foam on top of the waves as they. Crash down towards the beach, or sometimes if a dog has rabies, it might foam at the mouth, etc. Yeah. In that case, it's a verb. But、uh, well, we're drinking this kind of a beverage here that's got this layer of foam on the top, and you pick up the bowl with both hands and taste the drink. What is it? Well, it's a bittersweet green tea. Of course, here in Taiwan, you all know a lot about tea. There's black tea or red tea, as you call、uh -huh. it in Chinese. Yeah. You got oolong tea. And of course, you got green tea, which is what the Japanese prefer. And green tea, well, it's not so sweet and it's not so bitter. It's kind of in between.、Uh, that's why we use the word bitter sweet. It's got bitter and it's got sweet mixed together. And the next sentence just announces what we've just、uh, actually described. It does. This is matcha or powdered green tea. If something's powder,、uh, something that was originally a solid form in some solid form, you kind of press it, crush it until it turns into a fine powder.、Uh, that's what we're talking about today: is matcha. Or a powdered green tea, and you can go to a supermarket and buy powdered milk, for example. It might be more convenient than buying milk from the Seven Eleven or something、it、like that. It doesn't taste as good. That's what people say, but it's still quite popular, and、yeah. I guess it's probably more convenient for people living modern lives. But、uh, in this case, we're talking about powdered green tea. It's not the leaves, okay? It's、no. already in this powder, and there's a special way of preparing it.、Uh, let's move on now to the next. Next sentence here in the next paragraph. It says, "During the Song Dynasty, powdered tea was fashionable in China." That's not surprising. A lot of things that are popular in Japan originally came from China. Yes. In the Tang Dynasty, or in this case, the Song Dynasty, which was after the Tang Dynasty. If you talk about periods of history in China, we usually use the word "dynasty chao" to refer to different periods: the Han Dynasty, the Qin Dynasty.、Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Song,、uh, the Qing, etc. Those are all dynasties. Yeah, we even use it in America to describe some political families, like、uh, the Bush family.、Uh, they, you know, had two boys that were no, they had the dad and the father that were presidents, and then another son who wanted to run for president. That's kind of a dynasty. So it can either be a family,、uh, maybe of kings or rulers, like we're talking about here with the Song Dynasty, and they've ruled that country for many years, or. Or if you are describing a family as having a, being a dynasty, it just means there are lots of generations,、uh, and usually they have lots of money too. So、sure. it's a period of time when a particular family ruled a country or area. But you can also call a group or family that has a big business and they control it.、Uh, you can call that a dynasty as well. Okay, so this, of course, is、uh, where it came from. It.、Uh... Came from the Song Dynasty, and during that time, powdered tea was fashionable, which、yep. means it was popular. Yes. If it's fashionable, it's also popular, but especially popular among powerful people and rich people and stuff like that. It was a status symbol to have、mm. really expensive teapots, I'm sure, and to prepare really fancy. Powdered green tea. Well, in 1191, we've got Isai. I hope I said that right.、Uh, this was a Japanese Buddhist monk.、Uh, he introduced the preparation methods for powdered tea to Japan and made it popular there. And like a lot of things, I guess、uh, powdered green tea in China kind of faded away, but it remained popular in Japan.、Uh, if you're in Buddhism、uh, and you're a male and you shave your head and you wear the robes and stuff and you're studying. You're a monk, okay. But if you're female, we will call you a nun, okay? A Buddhist nun, and the male is a monk. There are monks also in the Christian religion, right? No, but you know what? There aren't actually. But I、in、thought Catholicism, aren't they? Aren't no, they monks too? no, they're priests. They're priests.、Um, I thought the women were monks too. They're they're nuns, huh? 
Yeah. Well, oh, that's what my uh, understanding is. They're referred oh, to as nuns. I've always but, called uh, them monks. Sorry, yeah, sorry, ladies. Wrong. I'm not a terribly religious yeah. person, but in any case, here、uh, this is Isai who introduced、uh, this powdered green tea to Japan, and then it became popular there, and people there called this tea. Matcha, matcha, right? So, which is more cha in、uh, in Chinese,、ah, right? Very close. Well, here in the next paragraph, it says in time. Or over time, it was discovered that growing tea bushes in partial shade gave matcha its unique flavor. So we've got these tea bushes, and you have to grow the tea leaves in a particular way. They need some shade. They don't like a lot of sun. So if it's something is partial, it's an adjective that means not complete, only part of something.、Uh, so here we've got. Tea bushes that have probably are in the the sun half the day and half the day they're in the shade and it gives the matcha its unique flavor. We also use partial guys in a phrase uh, uh, which goes "I'm partial to something." To be partial to something means you prefer it or you support something more than something else.、Um, I'm partial to a dark chocolate rather than milk chocolate, so oh, I、yeah. prefer the dark chocolate over the milk chocolate.、Um, so we've got this. Tea bush and shade、uh, that's giving this matcha its unique flavor. If something's unique, it's one of a kind. It's very special. Unique indeed. So yes, indeed,、uh, it's not set out in direct sunlight. It's not in one hundred percent shade. It's in partial shade, just a little bit of shade, and this gives it its unique flavor. Unique means, it's, as you said, it's a, a flavor that you're not going to find any other place. Well, nowadays. At the start of the harvest seasons, farmers cover their tea plantations with black sheets so the tea leaves are not exposed to the sun. I guess that's how they partially shade the matcha tea plants. Okay, nowadays that means in modern times when the harvest season begins and when they plant the seeds or whatever, they cover the tea plantations. Plantations with those black sheets. They're probably made out of a canvas or plastic or whatever, and they're doing this on their tea plantations. Uh, plantation is like a really, really big farm, okay? Which is going to have uh, uh, lots of facilities and maybe a lot of workers, like in the American South during the Civil War and before that, where the slaves worked.、Uh, they would work on cotton plantations. Yeah, or maybe even tobacco leaves. They were growing tobacco leaves for、uh, cigarettes and pipes and stuff like that. So,、uh, plantations usually、uh, a large area in a hot country too, and typical、uh, crops. That are grown: tea, cotton, sugar, tobacco, rubber, stuff, stuff like that. So they've got these tea plantations, and they use those black sheets to、uh, protect or shade the tea leaves. You know, I think I've seen this here in Taiwan. Yeah, so,、um, kind of rings a bell. Yeah, doesn't it? I, I've seen, and I thought, why are they putting that black? Uh, tarp, a、uh, tarp is kind of plastic, black plastic over those things.、Uh, but if you want to protect those leaves from the sun, you'd have to. The sun's so so strong、mm. in some places. So we've got this way of growing these crops of tea, the matcha matcha way, where you need partial shade. If something's exposed, we just、uh, we use this to say it's not covered up. Uh, we can also talk about exposure.、Uh, sometimes, if you use real film and you don't have a digital camera, think back to the olden days when we had real film. If you,、uh, if that film got any light on it, it would ruin it. So、uh, you didn't want to have that film exposed to light or the sun. Well, actually, you do. If you're using film, you want it exposed just for a small amount of time、yeah. with light coming through a lens, and you're controlling the aperture. Aperture and the shutter speed and stuff like that. I'm talking about opening up the back of the camera and just having your film. Yeah, exposure. The <laughs> yeah, exposure is the noun. Of course, expose is the verb,、mm -hmm. and expose could be、uh, used in lots of different situations. We want, we don't want to expose our children to violence, for example. Yeah, that's more、uh, figurative. Literally, I could say,、uh, oh, her her arms are exposed in that dress.、Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so you can see them. So we use it、uh, figuratively and literally both. That's a good verb. It certainly is, and that's what we're doing here: exposing the leaves to the sun, but only partially. So they're partially exposed to the sun. And we'll talk some more about the farming methods used for matcha in just a couple of seconds. But right now, we're going to take a break. 
And、uh, we're not going to listen to the Chinese teacher.、No. You'll just have to use your own minds for that. Welcome back, guys. We're talking about matcha, which is a very popular Japanese green tea. It's also a flavor that's being added to more and more foods these days. I've seen,、uh, of course, the ice cream that is matcha flavored,、yeah. which is a little weird to me because we don't eat. We typically don't eat tea flavored food in America so much,、uh, but it's very popular here. I've seen、uh, matcha. Uh, cakes and cupcakes, yeah,、uh, yeah, 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 things like that. that.、Mm -hmm. Yeah,、Absolutely. have you had it before? Sure, I love it. It's、uh, really great, ex、oh, except they sometimes put too much sugar in it. Oh, I like things plain. I like、uh, plain coffee without、uh, sugar, etc., etc. But、uh, in this particular case, we're talking about matcha and how it's grown, how green tea is grown, and how it's processed. Again, it is grown in partial shade. It gives it its unique flavor, and then these farmers use. Use these black sheets or black tarps、yeah. uh, to cover the tea plants on their tea plantations. Oh, can I just、uh, for a second? I want to、oh, spell tarp. T A R P is how we、tarp. spell tarp. Yeah. yeah, it's like a large、uh, piece of cloth or something used to cover something.、Mm -hmm. People sometimes cover their cars with large tarps so they don't get exposed to the sun or rain or whatever. Yeah, or if you're watching baseball and it suddenly starts to rain, they'll grab a tarp and cover the field. Cool. That's、yeah. a word that's not in today's lesson. So、uh. you're getting a really good deal、oh, today. Oh, we got、folks. lots of time to talk here. <laughs> we do, but in any case,、uh, we're talking about the process in which、mm. matcha tea is grown. So. Again, it's partially exposed to the sun, and this shading process helps improve both the taste、mm. and aroma of the tea. Of course, if you're a tea connoisseur, you know that tasting the tea is not the only important part of it. The smell is also the important part of it. The aroma of the tea, and I think there are probably different ways to prepare tea. But uh, uh, here in Taiwan, I was introduced to、uh, the tea drinking process. You pour the tea. In a smelling cup, I guess, and then you dump that into the drinking cup, and、huh. then you smell the cup that is now empty because the smell will be there, so you can appreciate that. Wow! And that's、uh, appreciating the aroma of、uh -huh. the tea. People do that with the alcoholic drinks as well, with cognac and wine. You not only taste it, but you also smell it to appreciate the aroma. Yeah, aroma is a word we use when the scent or smell is very nice. It's very Pleasant.、Uh, a scent is also a word that usually means very pleasing.、Uh, but if you use the word odor, O D O R, ooh, that's not a good smell. Yeah, you don't want that. So it's got a wonderful aroma. The practice is done in April, and tea leaves are then picked in early May. Uh, so they've already picked the leaves because we're in June now.、Mm. Now leaves are steamed, so they use that hot water and it creates steam and then blow dried. Girls and guys, if you have a blow dryer, it's that tool you use to blow your hair dry very quickly. Well, they use air or hot air probably to blow these leaves dry as well.、Mm. Then remember, we're talking about the matcha powder, right? So how do you make the powder? You grind the leaves into that powder. Ground is the past tense form of the verb. To grind, and it just means to break something、uh, like corn or coffee beans into very small pieces. And sometimes you grind it so much it turns into powder. And there are different ways to grind coffee. For example,、yeah. uh, you can、uh, set it on your grinder if you'd like it ground finely or more coarsely. And in this particular case, the dried tea leaves are ground into matcha powder. I don't know if they're ground finely or coarsely, but I'm sure、uh, there is a special way of doing that. And then they're sold on the market. Yeah, I'm gonna guess that they are ground finely、mm. because it's a powder. If it's coarse. I wouldn't call it a powder. So, in the next paragraph, we're going to go back in history a little bit. In the 1500s,、uh, the modern matcha tea ceremony appeared. So that's when they first started having these elaborate tea ceremonies with matcha tea. Its goal was、uh, to promote relaxation and communication between hosts and guests.、Uh, if they were having this tea ceremony, I'm assuming these people are very rich and wealthy.、Mm. I imagine poor people would be out working. 
working outside. If you're talking about a ceremony, guys, it's just a really important、uh, social event, or maybe it's even a religious event. Where you have some traditional actions or procedures about the way it's performed, we use ceremony with weddings, a wedding ceremony. We also use it to talk about the Olympics. When the Olympic Games first start, we have the opening ceremonies. So、uh, this is a tea ceremony. So they've got specific actions and things that they do. Uh, yeah, you're spot on there, Stephanie. And I think that、uh, tea drinking in Japanese tea,、uh, with Japanese tea,、yeah. is、uh, more complicated than the tea ceremonies here in Taiwan. At least that's my impression. I could、mm. be wrong about that, but it seems here that、uh, when y'all drink oolong tea,、uh, it's a fairly informal situation. Somebody, of course, is preparing the tea leaves and pouring the water in, and then distributing、uh, the cups around and stuff like that. But I understand that in the Japanese tea ceremony. Ceremony. It's far more complicated and requires more training and stuff like that. So yes, indeed, that all began in the 1500s. What about 400, 500 years ago or so? That's when the modern matcha tea ceremony began, or when it appeared. And why do we have this tea、yeah. ceremony? Well, its goal was being, or is being. Being to promote relaxation and communication between hosts and guests. That sounds like a good reason here. We want to promote relaxation, and we want to promote communication. Promote、uh, in the business world means you get a promotion, a higher position、mm-hmm. in your company. But but in this particular case, it means you make something more possible. You further the progress of something to promote better relations between countries. For example, we also use it、uh, in terms of. Advertising products.、Uh, you'll want to get some advertising going because you want to promote your product so people think、uh, well of it and they want to buy it. Now there are two types of matcha served in the ceremony.、Um, I think you said, Tom. I'm not good with this stuff. So us usucha. Usucha.、Uh, yeah, usucha. That's what it、oh, says in English there. But、uh, I、yeah. have a feeling in Japanese they、it's、probably skip over that second U. They probably probably say usucha or something like yeah, that. Yeah. But don't quote me on that. I'm not a Japanese scholar. They're not the same. So usucha is thinner and made from the tea, the leaves of bushes that are less than 30 years old. Oh, they're they're very young tea bushes. That's where they get those leaves for that. And then the koicha is thicker and it's made from bushes that are a minimum of 30 years old. Oh. I wonder what the difference in taste is. That's interesting.、Hmm. Well, if you were a connoisseur, if you、yeah. were an expert, you would know. But again, usucha in kanji in Chinese characters, I believe, is bo cha, and koi cha is nong cha. Just、oh, that for makes sense. just、yeah. for your reference, even、mm. though I'm not supposed to speak Chinese here, but I'm making、You're、an exception、trouble. here because technically I'm talking about something that is Japanese,、yeah. not Chinese. <laughs> so you can't fire me for that. And、okay. one of our one of our vocab words is minimum, which Just means、uh, the smallest or least that is possible, or allowed, or even needed.、Um, most kids need a minimum of ten hours of sleep each night.、Um, I need a minimum of, of, I would say, seven hours of sleep each night. So that's the minimum. That's the lowest number you can actually go to. So、uh, very interesting. They must have very old tea bushes over there. Uh, yeah, indeed, there are also speed limits on the highway,、yeah. and there actually、uh, there's a minimum speed. You can't go too slow,、no. or else you're going to cause problems.、It's、can't、true. go too fast, can't go too slow. You've got to go just right. <laughs> well, moving on now to the next paragraph here. It says, in addition to the ceremonial side of matcha, the drink also has many health benefits. So again, we're talking about the ceremony here,、uh, the different kinds of leaves that you use. We're not really talking so much about the prep. How it's done.、Uh-huh. I think it has to be ground a certain way. I went to、uh, kind of a promotion for tea at City Hall last year. Oh, cool! And、uh, yes, there was a, a girl there in a kimono,、cool. and she was preparing in a special way, grinding it up and bringing them out to us. So yeah, it seemed more formal、uh-huh. than other kinds of drinks. But in any case, in addition to that ceremony. Uh, there's also the health benefits. Okay, actually, green tea is good for you. I've been hearing that for many, many years. Me too. It seems like、uh, nobody has anything bad to say about green tea. 
So, what is so good about it? Well, first of all, it's loaded with antioxidants.、Uh, if it's loaded with something, it's got a lot of it. Sometimes, if you go to restaurants、uh, where they have a lot of、uh, comfort food, like hamburgers and、uh, mac and cheese and stuff like that, of,、uh, of course, very fattening. It's loaded with something. Maybe it's loaded with cheese or loaded with、um, sour cream would be my favorite. So, it's loaded with or has a lot of antioxidants. This word can be Be pronounced two ways. I just said it two ways: antioxidant or antioxidant. They're both correct. It's a substance in some foods that really helps your body. It cleans it. It protects it from cancer, and it makes you look younger. So you want a lot of foods with antioxidants, like blueberries. Indeed, yeah, and of course,、uh, to oxidize as a verb means to combine with oxygen, and I guess that's bad for the body. So you want these antioxidants to prevent that from happening, and to stop those free radicals,、yeah. which are kinds of chemicals that are running freely around your body, harming our cells, and we don't want that to happen. No, it's also nearly calorie free.、Mm. It also boosts your metabolism, and it burns fat. Okay, so if it's calorie. Free, then you don't need to worry about calories there,、uh, getting fat and stuff like that. And also, they do say that one way to burn fat is to boost your metabolism.、Mm -hmm. Oh, gee, I wish I could say it in Chinese. It's so much easier to explain that by just <laughs> translating it. But metabolism is about the changes that go on in your body. How fast you digest your food? You know,、mm -hmm. some people have a very fast metabolism, which means they can eat. Fifteen donuts every day, and they never get fat. That was my metabolism when I was young.、Mm. Uh, as you get older, your metabolism slows down, which means you cannot eat the same amount of calories, or you pack on the pounds. So be careful with that.、Uh, moreover, it says it helps people relax because it's rich in something called L-theanine,、uh, which is some sort of、uh, I don't know substance that is good for your body.、Mm. Um, I am not a scientist. I'm actually looking this up to see、uh, what it is. Maybe it'll tell us a little bit more.、Uh, I, I think they're mentioning it here just implies that it's something that's good for you.、Mm. We could just leave it at that. But、uh, it <laughs> is it a、up. chemical、yeah. that is in green tea, and it's good for you. So if you're ever in Japan and want to experience another side of the local culture, yeah, it's worth having some matcha in a meditative traditional tea ceremony. So、uh, yes, indeed, when we think of green tea. Or matcha, we do think of Japan, and of course, a lot of people go there, and they go there for that very reason. Although, you know, people here in Taiwan like these things too. So, I'm imagining there are opportunities in Taiwan as well to experience matcha in the tea ceremony, but、uh, you might have to pay through the nose for it. Oh, kind of expensive, huh? Maybe.、Um, yeah. I've seen some beautiful tea ceremonies, but only on TV.、Uh, the Travel Living Channel always has something、uh, that. It's kind of fun, but they can be very elaborate. So you have to practice a long time before you're actually、uh, very good at performing the tea ceremonies. But I think it would be fun to go watch and and see what it's like. Me too. It's very glamorous, I must say. Yes, so, it's worth having it, yeah, which means it's beneficial. It's worth it. We say that a lot. If something is beneficial, it's worth it. It's been worth it to live in Taiwan and improve my Chinese, for example. And sometimes we use "worth it" to talk about things that are tough. You know,、mm. all that work. All that study I did in college was worth it because I graduated with a great degree. So、uh, it's worth it having some matcha in a meditative, which means you're meditating. Close your eyes. You try to get rid of all the thoughts and you breathe deeply. That's meditation. This is the adjective form meditative. So it's a relaxing ceremony, and both of us recommend that you try it if you get the chance. Well, Tom, we have no we have no Chinese teacher, so we just have to wrap the puppy up. Let's wrap this puppy up, indeed.、Okay. But I'm getting thirsty here, so、uh -oh. I think after the lesson, I'm going to book my tickets for Japan. Cool. To have some matcha. Gee, where should I go? Should I go to Kobe, Osaka, Fukushima? Kyoto. Kyoto's Kyoto. My、uh, Kyoto. Yeah, that's、oh. a good. That's a good choice.、Mm -hmm. Okay, that brings us to the end of our lesson for today, and it's time to say goodbye. So thank you for joining us from all of us here at English Digest. I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. See ya.